when I grow up, I want to work in HR. Funny, huh? But <laughs> none of us really say that. Yet so much of our lives, when we grow up, is dominated by the processes that happen in HR. Interesting. I grew up in、uh, rural Western Canada in a very large Indo-Canadian community. If any of you have any Sikh friends or are Sikh, I'm sure one of you has a cousin or a friend who lives in Vancouver or Toronto. Well, one of my friends growing up, his name was Ravi, and he lived down the street. And Ravi and I, after school, would often go to his house. And when we'd go into the house, his parents, like most, had one sofa that was covered in plastic or a bedsheet, and there was a, a picture of a god on the wall. And whenever we'd move, the eyes would follow you. <laughs> right? And so we would go to Ravi's room, and、uh, his parents bought Ravi. An Apple IIe computer. For those of you who are under 30, don't worry. That's what it looks like. And so we would take these floppy disks and put them in, and and we start to code. We think we were coding. We're just trying to make the computer work, and we're having fun doing this. We'd go outside sometimes and we would play. And then one time or a few times, Ravi's mom would call and have Ravi come in to study. And if there's one thing that we knew is don't mess with Ravi's mom. So Ravi would go into study, but this would start to happen more and more often. Ravi was being called away from playing with his friends to go in and study. And soon, what ended up happening was Ravi was always studying. He was falling into the shadows of our friend circle. I, on the other hand, I chose not the shadows. I chose the stage. And the lights. So I ended up working with Cirque du Soleil. That's me, obviously, much younger. Or the makeup is good. I、uh, toured with the Cirque du Soleil.、Um, I did over 2,500 performances with this show, Saltim Banco. I worked in North America, South America, Europe, Asia. So in 2010, I was asked to go to Macau to create the House of Dancing Water. And if those, of, I didn't create it by myself. There was 500 of us, and we all went there. Riggers, dancers from France, Shaolin monk from China, acrobats from Tanzania, riggers from Australia, technicians from all over the world, high divers from Brazil. And for over almost two years in preparation and six months of creation, we created a show called the House of Dancing Water. To give us a bit of context, I'm going to show you a small video, and from there we'll see how it evolves. This is a, a technologic extravagance and human extravagance, but it's really kind of over the top, but with emotion. It's it's about life, love, death,、uh, birth. It's about all of this, but the world it's a kind of wow. It's a big,、uh, big thing, you know. It's a very hostile. This is a very hostile environment, you know. Up in the air, underwater, it's very hostile. So we need to have all the people everywhere to take care of the security of everybody. The acrobats, they、uh, are at such a level of、uh, elitism in their performance art. That、uh, it becomes a question of life or death if they're not paying attention. They repeat and they repeat and they repeat exercises so that it's not just the performers; it's also all of the technical crew who are having to learn to work with what the performers are doing. And the other really big thing is that we drill into the performers: is that if you feel unsafe or you're not sure about something, you don't do it. You stop. <laughs> It is beautiful in a, doing a show like this. It's a human adventure, and if we work well together, the show will 
tell this to the audience. These people are feeling good together. It's a kind of sub-language that exists in any human collective uh, adventure or journey. It's a big show. Uh, a lot of work, obviously, like most things are a lot of work. But what does this have to do with business, this process? Well, actually, I wasn't entirely lying when I said I want to work in HR. It's in fact true. So now I opened, along with 6,500 other employees, the Parisian Macau. And what I'm doing now is taking the iterative, iterative human process of theater and bringing it in to the organization. So what does that mean? We have a brand, an idea of a brand, which is a vision. And that can go branding externally, and so that becomes copy and campaign, and the consumer or the audience sees that branding and says, ah, oh, I want to be a part of that, or that echoes and resonates with me. So they come to the brand, and they want to have the experience. But on the other side, there's the identity, and that's internal. And this is how does the employee deliver the service or the quality or the experience and deliver that promise of the brand. And that's what I'm doing, creating an aligned, manageable, measurable quality of service that echoes the brand promise so that when the consumer comes to the experience, that is there. So we feel that the brand makes sense. And that's how I'm doing it. So let me give you an example. Creativity. Creativity is a big word. When you start to unpack it and read it, there's a really good book by James Kaufman called Creativity. It's complex, but it can be shaken out in a couple of ways. And one of the interesting ways by Kirby Ferguson, and he says that the basic elements of creativity are three things. You can take an idea and copy it. You can take an idea and transform it. Or you can take two different ideas and combine it. So let me give you an example of that. So when we were creating the, how, the, uh, the Parisian, I was walking around in the uh, casino and I saw that the dealers, they have both hands on the table, and when you come by, they show you the table like this. And so they're supposed to do it very nicely, but of course, when they're sitting there for a few weeks or months, right, and I said, ah, that's a touch point that I can tweak. And so I remembered in ballet, Western ballet, some of the mudras, if you were to say in Katakali is a mudra or in ballet, this means Let's dance. Let's dance. So I thought about that, and I said, well, this is interesting. So I changed it, and I said, oh, what if it's just to play? Let's play. So I slightly transformed it. So then as we were doing the rapid prototyping, or in theater we call rehearsal, so I worked with a bunch of people to test it, and so we saw that Chinese ladies were doing like this. It became very awkward, and it didn't work. And out of the corner of my eye, I see an Indian security guard do this. I said, why did you do that? He says, because that is ugly. Oh. So, okay, so what did you do? And he did this. So, so why do you do just that? And he says, because I go from my heart to the table. Ah, well, okay, you beat me, that's good. So actually it changed, and so we then changed the gesture. So now we have about 4,500 dealers, Chinese women and men, who just do this. And so I was able to, through the prot rapid prototyping, to change the idea and to have something much more simple. Yeah? Created a different touch point. In the House of Dancing Water, where I worked with a group of Tanzanian acrobats, and they would like to make fun of me. So um, they would always imitate me and mock me on the way I would talk or the way I would do something. And one day I caught on to this. So I'd move, they'd move. I'd move, they'd move. I would make a gesture, they'd make a gesture. And the director caught on to this. He saw that this was happening and wanted to start to, to develop this idea. And the choreographer came over and he said, okay, let's codify this, make it five, six, seven, eight, and we start moving around together. I said, ah, don't do that. If you do that, you kill all the fun. All the spontaneity that we are having together and playing, you're going to kill it. And that got me to thinking that creativity is actually intelligence having fun. It's a nice phrase. Unfortunately, I don't own it. Albert Einstein does. Creativity is intelligence having fun. So the essence of creativity, ultimately, once you've laid the intellectual framework and foundation, is to have fun. So I would say creativity, yeah, whatever. Just have fun. It'll take care of itself. Point two, active empathy. 
So when I'm working with Franco Dragon, for example, that's me on stage with him, I'd always be watching and I'd say, what is his dilemma? What is he working on right now? What is the problem or the issue that he's working with? And I saw that by having empathy with him, I could see I can go opposition to him, or I can go in parallel with his idea to try to give him material and food to work with. And so what we was doing was creating a sort of mental jazz together, a ping pong of sorts. Similarly, these are friends of mine here rehearsing, you know what you have to do, and the person who's in the middle is feeling where that individual is above. They know what her problem is to catch her balance, and there's an active dialogue that's occurring. So that's what I'm doing now with businesses. They're not standing on each other, thankfully, but what I'm doing is through the simple child's game, let's say playing tag, adults will say, oh, no, that's right, I was uh, it, no, you're it, and I'm wrong, you're wrong, and what happens is they get to na 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 and start talking. I say, shut up, just start playing. So I would say collaboration starts when you shut up and start listening. And when you have that active empathy, then there's an actual dialogue that's occurring. Because when you're really listening and dialing into someone, you will start responding in kind. Active empathy. One plus one equals three. So in a transactional society, I have money, you have an artifact of value. I give you money, you give me the artifact, commerce over. So I no longer have the money, you have the money, I have the artifact, so there's a one-to-one -one exchange. In the knowledge economy, I have an idea, you have an idea, we share ideas. Now, you still have the idea, I still have the idea, we have something new, and the real competitive advantage is how I can synthesize the idea. Yeah? So, when I th think about, as we move forward, in the world of the ideas, it's not about having a diversity in your team that's just color of your skin or the culture that you're from, but it's about having people who have different types of knowledge and different types of experience that will create a real competitive, competitive advantage in your company. So when I look now and I think back to Ravi, he probably became an engineer or a lawyer or a doctor, and that's all fine. Maybe he became a taxi driver, I don't know. But the thing is, is that my daughter will be born in December. What I want is I want that my child goes and learns an instrument, learns fine arts, travels, has different cultural experiences, as well as learn, because I know that that way she'll be a fuller, more creative individual. And I believe, especially for us who are growing up in this new economy, that that will be the essential skill. So in essence, business needs more circus. Thank you.